Five years ago, I bought this home assistant called Amazon Alexa. And if I had a dollar for every time I used it since, I would be homeless. Can you guess what my most used Alexa request is? That was a rotten one. I ask Alexa to fart. You think I'm joking, but I'm serious. It's not a fetish thing, I swear. I'm just trying to cope with the fact that I spent $45 on it, only to realize that I have no reason to use it for anything. If I need to know the time, I can just look at my watch. For the weather, I have my phone which provides much more information, and if I want to be slightly less misinformed, I just ask ChatGPT. We need an upgrade. Literally, a voice assistant built from the ground up. A device that is not only smarter than any other voice assistant, but better looking, cheaper and more private. And I got the perfect plan for that. The brain of the device is going to be a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, a tiny single board computer. What's important here is that it can connect to the internet and locally run the code that detects speech. For the visuals, I will be using a circular LED array like I did in my previous project. Due to the low pixel density, I won't be able to display a lot of information, so it's mostly just going to be used as an ambient light. Without audio, it wouldn't be a voice assistant, so we need a speaker and a microphone. Now, you cannot just connect them directly to the computer because the signals would be too weak to be usable. That would be like trying to power a house with a AA battery. That's why I'm going to use an amplifier for both the speaker and the microphone. Alright, now that we got a basic overview, the next step is to design the electronics. And all you gotta do is... And we're done! That only took 14 days to make, but who cares because the PCBs are done and ready to be built. But damn, I'm a few pennies short of being able to buy multi-million dollar PCB fabrication facility. Only if I could get my parts online at a much more reasonable price. Huh? What's this? Damn! This is just what I wanted. It's already assembled and everything. Thanks PCBWay for sending these over. What you saw there is deception via editing. I jumped ahead in time to when the circuit boards arrived, because in reality it actually took more than a few seconds to manufacture and ship these PCBs, so in the meantime I tried designing the shell. Alright, let's design. How do I rotate the... Uh, huh? How do I start making something? Okay, so for the past year I have been using something called Tinkercad for designing 3D objects, but I've outgrown it, so recently I switched to a much more professional one called Onshape. Don't worry, this video isn't sponsored. Money! 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 Ah! <coughs> With new cast software comes newfound depression, Sun Tzu, the art of war. So yeah, I had to learn an entirely new software, but I had plenty of time to learn the basics. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. The modules and components just arrived, so I had the perfect excuse to do anything else but the hard work. By having an even harder work to do because I have no idea how to code. Now that I have the parts, I can connect them together on a breadboard to test if everything works fine before the PCBs arrive. Now here's the problem. In the past 3 years, I have tried making not one, not two, but five different games, in three different game developing applications. Let me show you these and see if you'll notice the problem. These games are one-to-one -one copies made from YouTube tutorials. I literally just copy-pasted the entire code that I've seen in the video without even knowing what the code does. One time I was even like, I gotta go all in. So I spent a month writing down 45 pages of notes, only to suddenly lose motivation and never open that notebook again. The last time I was coding and actually understood what I was doing was over one and a half years ago, and even then I didn't go very far. Now that you know how great of a programmer I really am, you can most definitely predict the chaos that's about to ensue. 
Let's start with how the system is going to work. Since it's going to be a voice assistant, it should only respond once it hears a specific wake word, something like computer or terminator. I am going to use the wake word Ravi, since this project is also called that and there's no way someone would accidentally say the word and activate it. To do this, the microphone always has to be listening to the environment, recording and deleting audio snippets until it hears the wake word. Once it's activated, it listens Nobody cares, so I found this simple flowchart to explain everything. This project is really not that complicated. Here comes the hard part. Am I really going to have to code everything from scratch? Will I have to get programming courses so I can finish this one project? How does this faker detection thing even work? Wait, what? For a measly $25, these two boards right here you can build your own voice assistant that controls your entire smart home. So yeah, it turns out somebody already made a full tutorial on what I wanted to do. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to... <coughs> Alright, now everything works. N no, it doesn't. Unlike me, the guy in the tutorial uses a Pi hat, which is just a module you plug directly into the Raspberry Pi. Think of it like plugging your speakers into your PC. Then he uses a single line of code, which sets up literally everything needed for it to work. And that's it for the most part. Now I, an expert programmer... What am I doing exactly? Oh come on! Designed my project around custom parts, so I had to use a platform I had no experience with, trying to type comments into the terminal I copied off Stack Overflow, just to make two goddamn modules communicate with a computer that can fit in my ass. Time to reinstall everything for the third time. Hell yeah, we're back at it again. I forgot to order the microphone, so I had to improvise, but I already wasted 4 entire days trying to figure out the software. I needed to take a break from coding, so I moved on to learning the new CAD software I have been procrastinating for a week. To my surprise, the software was a lot easier to learn than I thought. And only after a few projects, I was already able to design more complex parts. And the boards finally arrived from PCBWay and the next step was to assemble everything. And as you've seen before... There we go, I just saved you from 8 hours of soldering and crippling neck pain. But oh, look at that, flashy colors for the first time. This looks quite bland, so we need a shell. Huh, much better. Alright, we're pretty much done. Whoa, 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 Blitico, what about the software? Did you manage to fix all the problems? Nope, I was already running out of time to finish this project, so I had to scrap the home assistant thing for now and finish it later. But I can't just have voice assistant in the title because that would be clickbait. So let's just say I use the power of editing to make things work for now. Enjoy! Ravi, play some music. Alright, but does it hold up to my initial goals? The LEDs add quite a lot of customization to the device, unlike my Alexa, whose lights are only used as an indicator. Considering this was made at home by a single person in the span of 30 days, I think we can agree that this does look better, even if the quality isn't up there with mass-produced items. Is it cheaper? Well, not really, but mine costs so much because I chose express shipping and assembly service so I could finish the video sooner. But you can cut off $200 if you're willing to solder the 310 components yourself and wait a month for global shipping. But it's still not going to be cheaper than an Alexa because of the sheer number of LEDs. And finally, is it more private than a typical home assistant? Technically, yes. Not only did I forget to order the microphone, but I couldn't even set up the software that would have used it to record my voice. In a way, my lack of competence saved my privacy. I'd say that's a win.